Welcome to today's episode of Empowered Divorce Decisions, where we discuss the financial information you need to know to make good, informed decisions in your divorce. Today, we are discussing classifying property in your divorce. This is really critical. Understanding what is, one, marital property, two, separate property, and three, hybrid property can make a significant impact on your divorce and on your financial future. I'm Alina Cannon. I'm a private wealth advisor and the divorce and investment strategist at Arch and Bridge Advisors. Joining to me today is my lovely co-host and fellow divorce financial planner, Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Hi, I'm Jamie Blum. I am the Director of Divorce Financial Planning and Litigation Support at Argen Bridge Advisors. Property classification is an important step in the divorce process. It sets the foundation for how assets and debts will be divided. So let's dive right in. First things first, what is property? Property are the assets and debts that are evaluated during the divorce process, such as homes, cars, retirement and investment accounts, contents of safe deposit boxes, life insurance, cemetery plots, artwork, wine collections, and so forth, just to give a few examples. Absolutely. And so that first property classification type in divorce is marital property. Marital property typically includes assets and debts acquired, as the name implies, during the marriage. So this can range from things like the family home, joint bank accounts, brokerage accounts, retirement savings accounts, etc. Marital property is what is essentially subject it's to division and divorce. It's, it's the pot um, that is divided in a divorce settlement agreement. That's right, Alina. And now on the flip side, separate property includes assets or debts owned by one spouse before the marriage or acquired through gift or inheritance during the marriage. Separate property is not subject to division and divorce. Yes. And one challenge to property classification during divorce is identifying assets that fall into this gray area. And that's essentially the third property classification bucket in divorce. And that's what we call hybrid property. So hybrid property is part marital and part separate. And typically in divorce, only the marital portion of hybrid property is what is subject to division and divorce. Hybrid property could be assets that are acquired partially before the marriage, partially during the marriage, and potentially even partially after the date of separation, um, depending on which state you live in. The easiest example of an asset that is hybrid is a 401k retirement account from an employer that um, you made contributions to before the date of the marriage, potentially your employer also um, made contributions to before the date of the marriage and during the marriage, also potentially um, post-separation again, depending on which state you live in. Also depending on which state you live in, the market gains and losses of those contributions um, could be considered either a separate portion, could be considered either separate or marital. Again, that's just depending on which state you live in. Another challenge to property classification is when the accounts are commingled. Commingling happens when separate property gets mixed with marital property, making it harder to trace. And that's when the property becomes hybrid property. You need to hire a financial professional to document and trace the funds to determine what is marital separate and hybrid. You need to keep detailed records of what you bring into the marriage, what is acquired during the marriage, and what is acquired during or after the date of separation. Generally, financial institutions only keep records for seven to 10 years. So save as much information as you can, either electronically, or the actual documents so they can be reviewed by financial and legal professionals. 
every situation has its own complexities and we're very experienced in this type of classification training. Absolutely. And so that concludes today's episode of Empowered Divorce Decisions. Thank you for joining. Reach out to myself or Jamie with any questions. Remember that you have the power to make good, empowered decisions during your divorce and stay subscribed to Stay Empowered. Thanks.